Many of the demons found in Chimere are naturally occurring. They are organisms warped by infectious hives optimizing their host, or sometimes even hives that, in an effort to create the perfect host, take pieces of other hosts that they have exhausted, or even forming bodies from inorganic materials. These natural demons are, fortunately, quite rare, and each is unique. With the possible exception of the Ushalek, a supposedly enchanted forest north of the known world, these hives seem localized, sticking together and jumping from one host to another rather than reproducing or joining forces. At the height of their power, witches from the first children civilization use their mastery of magic, the endemic life of Chimere, to customize these demons for their own purposes. They created homunculi. The purposes of these creations are the subject of much speculation, as most homunculi are as extinct as their creators, survived only as horrifying rock paintings left by the Chimerans they fed upon. During the Age of Witches, many were hunted down and destroyed. Some homunculi hide on the fringes of the known world, living out an eternity alone. Others have integrated into the ecologies of Chimere, mostly those that have managed to reproduce. Even created life finds a way. Perhaps the greatest success stories are the Children of the Sky, or Harpies. Although genetically Chimeran humans, these homunculi have the homeybox genes of teratorns, giant birds, and grow a second pair of limbs from which great wings now grow. In the known world, laying claim to the Housey Prairie are three lineages each descended from a homunculi created by the first children. There are black, golden, and red-winged harpies that live in mixed tribes scattered across the prairie on mesas on which they roost to stay away from predators. They reproduce asexually, laying eggs that grow into clones of themselves. Marielena, a young black-winged harpy, is the protagonist of the sixth short story in Tales of Chimere, Songbird's Lament. Another successful group of homunculi found on the prairie are the giants. These beings average 11 to 13 feet tall, although men can grow in excess of 16 feet. They reproduce sexually. Although they are modified in proportions with long elephantine legs and reduced heads and arms, their genetics aren't terribly different from their Maku predecessors. It is unknown why they were created or why they can reproduce sexually, but this quirk is no doubt a key to their success. Giants can be found in hundreds of small bands throughout the prairie, and they have spread throughout the grasslands of the northern continent. They and the harpies have also populated the nearby eastern continent. The oceans of Chimere are also a haven for homunculi. Some of these merfolk have morphological coding for sharks, other bony fish, or marine reptiles and mammals. Due to hunting by Chimere and witches, they are also cautious of the known world, although some merfolk bands will readily trade with the Kentarim. Some merfolk reproduce clonally, others sexually, and one particularly nasty strain called the Drowned Ones reproduced by infecting Chimerans, drowning them, then letting their hives take over the corpse and animating it by altering the body to resemble their own. Some homunculi are ancient beings. They lurk in the shadows, often resentful of the loss of their dominion during the Age of Demons, which began with the collapse of the first children and concluded when the Age of Witches supplanted them. Some of these homunculi feature heavily in the folklore of the Chimerans, such as the crocodile god Olakidu, a notorious man-eating monster in Picardian myth. Some of these beings can reproduce like the drowned ones, creating thralls from beings living or dead. These thralls aren't true reproductions like the children of the harpies or giants, and serve more as extensions of the host mindless slaves and zombies, acting more as a witch's familiar than a child, unless their demon sees fit to give them free will. 
Generally, Chimerians make poor thralls, since they have a little bit of hereditary magic, which means that the thralls can often break free of their parents' control. To escape the witches, some homunculi fled to Earth. It was among these humans that creating thralls was highly successful, as humans of Earth don't have hereditary magic to defend themselves. These homunculi and their thralls sparked all sorts of myths, being called vampires and demons, jinn and ghouls. Many cryptids can also trace their origins to homunculi and their thralls. Most have been hunted down over the centuries by human witches and shapeshifters, but their legacy lives on in myth and epic tales. A homunculus that made its home on Earth is one of the two protagonists of Echoes of Laughter, the last short story in the Tales of Chimera anthology. Echoes of Laughter is presented as the truth behind Beowulf. Grimlea is trying to live out his days in the forests and marshlands of Denmark, hoping to forget about his difficult past in a distant realm. A new mead hall disturbs his forest, and Grimhlea slaughters the guests until calm returns. Things are quiet for a few years, but one night, a party echoes over the hills. Could they really have forgotten him so soon? Grimhlea decides to remind the humans why the slaughterhouse hall should be abandoned. Not aware that the festivities tonight are a trap, and what waits for him is a challenge he is not ready for. In our next Halloween video, we will discuss the Skin Changers, a type of magical being found throughout Chimere and on Earth. Until then, take care! Stay spooky, folks.